Hello everybody and welcome to episode 3 of my tutorial series for Good Company. I'm Icon and this one we're going to expand our business with a new product and we're also going to expand our business with an entirely new building. Also, since it's almost deadline time, we are going to try to select a company goal that we are doing our best to achieve. So there's quite a lot of things on the map right now. So let's get started. So first thing that I want to do is I want to know what kind of goal we can get there. And therefore we are actually not going to design that new product that I want to design right away. We are going to wait until this uh, deadline is through. But we're going to get on over here to the market overview and I'll just let the time run in the background because it really doesn't hurt us. We are making profit and I'm going to do a slow expansion here. I knew that when I started this series. So when we discover a new market, we're going to go for the calculators next. I could go for the toy robots if I'd really want to, wanted to spend all my discovery points, but I personally feel like the more products the better and we're going to expand in that region. Now we have the ability to design the calculator product. That's all you need. You need to expend those discovery points and then you have the ability, but let's get on deeper into the market thing. So as we see here, I already mentioned that I think these, I, th these products have faces. So when this face is at 100%, you can prog uh, progress one step further. This can only happen if a total of 940 units have been sold, as you see here. These are different. It grows hotter the further we go down the road, obviously. And therefore, it is a good thing to sell more and more of these things, and a bad thing at the same time. Because when we progress a face, I mouse over here and keep your eye out on the expected features, the expected features will go up. So the people will grow more demanding when we progress a face, and it's a opportunity for us to design a new product. We can still sell our old product, but then we can't oh, we can't reach our five stars with the market appeal alone because our product will be old. We have to work with the price, and you can switch discounts up and down for that regard. But we're going to go into that later. What's really interesting there now is when we go here into the sales tab. This is the real interesting thing. So we see here our competitors. So black, that's us. And so the bar here is the total amount the market will accept. So as we see here, we can sell 55 of these things per week. And there is still a demand of 24 remaining. So this way you can find out whether or not it's worth diving into a product or not. And as you see here with the cassette player, the green player is also putting hot pressure on us. Whereas with the calculators, there's no pressure at all. So you have to decide whether you want to dominate a market or diversify around. That's absolutely up to you at this point because we're playing with low difficulty competitors, but I think in the long run, diversifying is to try to avoid your competitors, whereas selling a product harder and going for market competition is trying to take on the fight with the AI. At the end of the day, you always want to have the best product on the market to sell the most units there. And well, we'll find out how our how the AI will react once the phase is progress, because that's one thing that I don't know yet, because that hasn't been included in the early access back then. Well, for us, we have now to decide whether we want to create more cassette players, virtual pets, or the new calculators. So I personally say we're going to set up a new production line for the cassette players, and then we're going to see what we're up to. So. We know that we need all these things. So the first thing I want to do is I want to just set up a new assembly table there. And I dare to put that into the delivery area, but because the utmost uh, sliver there is not going to get us uh, anywhere. So let's see, why is this guy actually not grabbing the batteries there? That's an excellent question, isn't it? So. 
for some odd reason, and that's quite the frustrating one. As you see here, this table is just connected. I don't know why that's the case, but here we see clearly the downsides of the automatic connection system. And I have uh, I have tried around the other day. We now really have to set the table here into a logistically worse spot to make the deal happen. But here we also have the issue that battery stacks are missing, which is actually right. We don't have enough battery stacks. Okay, so now everything's working out. The longer I do play, the more I grow convinced of the fact that you're better off with uh, connecting your shelves manually because the AI really does its best. But in the long run, as you see here, we are seeing more and more gibberish here between the lines, but that's okay. We're going to set up a factory line later without these problems. A, with that I mean uh, we're going to set it up with uh, manual connections, but I want to reserve that for the point when we're going to expand our business even further. We're starters, this is all fine, but I think at this point we already do understand enough of the game that this wouldn't be that much of an issue anymore, right? So we have now amped up our production of cassette recorders and the, the deadline is actually already on. I derped on that. But four days are not going to kill us. As we see here, this goal has been just taken over into the next uh, bracket. I appreciate that because, you know, making a profit of 100,000 in 90 days at some point we will achieve. So we can now select either to produce 200 calculators with at least four features. So let's be real about that. Usually we produce in a week about six, if we go really crazy, 12 of these items. So one week or seven days. Even if we are producing this, uh, no, we're, we're not going to achieve this kind of uh, amount. That's just too much. So let's see. Sell 48 stacks of modules to the market. That would be something we could do. What would we get for that as a passive effect? Increases market price bonus from gold rewards by to five person. Well, it's not that interesting, isn't it? So we'll stick just to that one. I think that's just perfect. We can commit to that one too, though, because it won't hurt, you know? We are just on it and it, uh, it won't hurt us. Okay. So we got all that. So far, one of the best things that I discovered to uh, to give you to refresh your uh, automatic connections a bit is to move the storages around. This way, the AI will try to find the most optimal connections again. And the more stuff you build, the more variants arise and it ha it ends up with the AI not knowing where to go with itself if that makes any sense. So we're going to set up a new table for battery stacks because I noticed that the employee down here has no battery stacks anymore and this way we are going to expand our our little empire bit by bit. And as you see here Wherever I want to put down a new shelf, there's almost no connections arising. That's most of the time a good thing. That means everybody should be happy-ish. Let's see. All right. So since we now know that we're not going to be uh, able to get this done. Why are you looking like that? So let's see. Ah, I bet it's not enough battery stacks. Yeah. Okay. Well, so far so good. Let's see what's ha what happened to our uh, cassette recorder market. So, a competitor hopped on in. Not cool. And our production chains are all over the place. So, one big issue arising here is that... 
we are out of uh, logistics workers again. There we go. So, if if all workers don't find enough space to put their products down, it's it's a matter of the logistic people. But we're turning a nice profit there, so stuff's going out quite well. Personally, find it very, very hard to optimize the workflow with the automatic settings, though. I gotta admit that. As you see me here struggling, that's because I usually, for myself, prefer to run the autom not with automatic connectors, but with uh, manual connectors. It's a lot more work, but it's also way easier to find the culprit in your system and adjust it. So. You surely understand that we're going to roll different there. Okay, so we got all this. Let's get on over to the new market that we want to go there. So calculators are easy. Nobody is on the market yet. That's pretty good for us. And as we see there, the uh, easy competitors have much higher sales numbers than us. So we suck quite hard. That's the gist of it. But that's okay. I mean, I'm explaining like uh, most of the time. So the computer has an advantage on us. The easy computer. So we're going to build ourselves a calculator. And we're going to go with a wooden casing there. And let's just slap in the modules necessary. There's, at this point, nothing we need to explain anymore, I think. So let's roll with the battery stack there and the single cell battery and done. So now here we got a total feature value of 2.5, which is pretty cool. We could also increase that only to get a company goals go, um, succeeded, but I'm personally not a big fan because the thing there is, if we would put in parts here only to satisfy company goals, we would be lowering our margin. And I don't like that. So all these parts necessary for this good boy are going to be available there. So we already know what we're going to do. We'll set up a new assembly table. We're, we're going to build this bad boy. We're going to need a new pallet where we're going to sell those new products. And uh, let's just add up LED array, battery stack, and single cell battery. So I already added another table for battery stacks a moment ago. So I want to uh, I want to hesitate here for a moment, and let's just make this happen here. And let's just. Uh, Put a couple of shelves in here and there. Okay, obviously this one would be appreciated by our dudes too. Look at that one. So, still not sure if this is the optimal way of configuring the uh, automatic system, but I gotta say the automatic system is in this regard. Weirdly enough, more complicated than the than making everything manually. If you get my, if you catch my drift, but it's certainly not bad if you don't want to uh, break your noggin about uh, configuring all these things and programming these things and play this more like a business simulator. That's something I really do like about the game. So. Let's hire another logistics dude, because if I am sure about one thing, then it's the fact that we are going to need more logistics dudes. I'm sure about that. So, let's see. Our tables are all working. That's really good. Products being transferred. Okay. Looks like we're getting somewhere here fast. So there's yet again one dude. Target inventory full. So that means even more logistics employees, as I see. As you see here, you really need a lot of people carrying stuff around. 
because somebody is not carrying the cassette recorder away. But you, as a uh, as a player, you have some power here too. So here's another thing: the AI just doesn't reserve enough slots for these things. We're actually set, we're actually producing more than we are able to transport away, and that's not necessarily a good thing. So. Let's see if this backlog is now resolved. And you see, that's why I wouldn't ever recommend to produce three different products in one assembly hall, ever. I just wanted to showcase this. I partially knew that this would be a bit of a catastrophe. So here we see there's a lack of battery stacks. So let's create a couple of more of these. It really all goes a lot easier if you just assign each hole to a a single purpose, single product, and then churn out large masses. That's practically also what, what the AI is doing in comparison to us, as we see here. Our sales are widespread among the over the board, and we can't get way more focused than that. But I felt like in tutorial series uh, dedicated for beginners. I love doing mistakes like these, or not mistakes, just uh, laying out typical scenarios that everybody of us has to go through before you know it better, you know. So, but on the bright side, I don't see any any hiccups here anymore. It doesn't seem like anybody's not knowing what they're doing. So, or here. So this guy doesn't have an output there. Oh yeah, so... Uh, there, there has been talking between the episodes, and it has been very helpful talking about how to resolve situations like these. I can only summarize. This happens because this employee's table... Let's see. Yeah, yeah let's link to that. Because this employee's uh, shelf here is just full with these things. The only thing you can really do against that is to turn over to manual connectors and tell this employee that there are two places where he can just deposit things. And then you'd go for one connection that's going to be the one where our crafters pick up from and the other which is going to be the overspill. But we're going to cover all that, don't you worry. It's a lot of fun. It's way more fun than you might think. Okay, next step. We have to wait until this whole business now is profitable again, you know? So we have short intervals where people are waiting for a hauler again. So here somebody's not able to deposit their coils. That's not an issue at all. We could we, we could consider selling off these thingies, but uh, it's not like this is costing us any money. All right, let's see. We are seriously only producing three calculators a week out of this uh, thing there. This is horrible. This is outright horrible. But considering the fact that we are taking uh, 1.9 days, it does actually make sense. So, to save ourselves, we're going to set up a, another of these tables, because I'm pretty sure that Right now, we are mostly lacking workforce. Okay, so no expansions before we aren't uh, going profitable again, you know. So let's see if this stacks out our business better. So I see that the CEO's table has short intervals where there's no, where there's some waiting for a transport, but we're getting better, so let's see. But all in all, let's see. At the end of today, we're going to check out how many products are stuck in shelves here. So, let's see. There's one of them, guys, stuck in a shelf. Let's see. There's nothing stuck in a shelf. There's also nothing stuck in a shelf. Good, good. Alright, so we turned 
2,300 over, and there's even one of these guys left there. Okay, so we have a positive cash flow. Of course, this is all quite crappy, and we, we better organize ourselves, but, you know, let's try to keep up with that, as ugly as it might be. So we did successfully amp up our production here a tiny bit. The thing here is, the assembly tables that aren't being operated by extremely good employees are just slower, and products have different assembly times. So therefore, there's a lot of difference going on there. Okay, so let's get our researchers over to this place. So we buy that building, you always have to look for the red for sale sign there. And the first thing we're going to do now is we're going to set up one career pellet here and one over here. Let's put it down here. Okay. So the analysis desk will now get other projects because you see, we really have analyzed enough of these things there. So let's put the analysis desk over here and we're going to pick up these items here. We don't need them anymore here in the storage. I don't want them to lie around in the storage either, though. So I'm not going to transfer the shelf over there yet, because we there's no configuration there. So let's see. I want to have other research points than the ones that, that we got right now. So let's see. What kind of research points will we need in the, in the near future? So... Bot chassis. Well, that's a little bit far off. So, is there anything except for these points that we already got? <laughs> so, well, doesn't seem so, but it does seem so as if we'd need stupendous amounts of these points, so that's fine. Okay, let's see. Beepers would be one thing to give us these th uh, thingies there, but tell you what, we're going to analyze plastic and wooden casings, why not? So what we're going to do now is we're going to set up a new tinker table here, and we're going to add a rule for plastic cases and wooden cases, because this is going to be the place where the cases for this new building will be stored and uh, transported as. So we're going to configure this pallet now too. So there we go. So now these two pallets know that they are supposed to store these items, but to transport these things from one area to another, we need to do more than that. So first off, let's set up another tinker table over here. Or, let's make that even two, I'd say. Or, well, well, let's keep it with one. I don't want to increase my overhead too much. So, here we go. And most importantly now, we're also going to set up another shelf there. Alright. So, now we got this. But those items, of course, aren't going to be transported. As you see here... This crazy guy is now picking up, or I think he's just carrying those from his old workplace. So to connect up these things, we're going to put up a route. So up here you see the courier routes. This menu allows you to connect courier pallets over the map with each other, and it's the way how we connect buildings with each other. So we create our first route here. Click there, and now add. we're adding one courier pallet, that one. And the other courier pallet, that one. So the items in question to transport have to be configured. Boom and boom. And now you see there, the donkey courier pallet is going to be the unload place. And the lizard courier pallet is going to be the pickup place. We can here now also check out how we're going to handle that. You also can set up various different uh, rules that will help you out there. And the most important thing, though, is don't forget to assign an employee to that, because otherwise the thing will happen. Okay, so now we get this. We got this all set up and running. This is our logistics employee. 
She's going to cycle back and forth now. From this one place to the other. So now it's time to pick up this thing, pressing C to move something. And uh, we got this now. All right, let's wait for our employees to finish up here. So the first thingy there has been constructed. And let's see. Ah, yeah, here we ain't got no logistics employee here. Those red exclamation marks are really kind, really big helper there. So yeah, our employee now is no has no materials anymore. And as you see there, the logistics employees do traverse non-stop there. So we see here that the wooden casings get loaded in there. So let's check out the connections there. So this place here is connected to several pallets. And that's something, for example, we can't change here, sadly. Let's see. You set the zone to automatic logistics, and therefore you are not allowed to change that. This is kind of sucky because now, what what will happen is this pallet will only be served with casings as soon as this place here is overfulfilled with casings. And that's the bad thing, and we can't change that. We can't tell this guy to prioritize this place over the other. I haven't found any way to, of doing so. If you know any, let me know. So at this point, we'll just have to accept that this is a uh, lost cause or the other way to uh, resolve that would be to set up everything on manual settings and configure it better. And that's what we are going to do over in this zone. So the lizard zone is the automatic one. And the donkey zone, let's uh, re. Come on. Let's. Let's be adults here. The lizard zone is. Uh, the, this is no longer. Come on. Let's uh, call it like that. Let's call things as they are, like they are. Oh, here we go. And now for this one, we're going to go for the policies that are increasing this stuff here. That's really good. So we're going to turn this off now. Warning! You're never going to get help again! So the good thing here is all these uh, connectors are still up and running, so we'll just have to connect new things henceforth, but that's okay. It'll now take a while until the overproduction of cases is going to reach this thing. So what we're going to do is now we're going to set up extra tinker tables and uh, we we have a ultra slow production of casings you gotta know because we aimed we, we didn't go for the investment there and here you see the plastic casings are not in the store storage so we just press c now and move this guy and i bet oh no why are you placing down your plastic cases ah here okay well, let's see these are also connected. Good. So, maybe I was wrong. Maybe these things are automatically refreshing and I wasn't uh, aware of that. I feel like the, the biggest issue I got with the automatic connection system is that it is, it is too obscure. It is so hard to find everything, how it's working out correctly, and it's really making it harder for you to turn out profits. And as you see here, this is ultimately one of the biggest reasons why I personally think the automatic connectors are going to put you into quite some trouble because now we'll have to wait until there's enough material there for our logistics employees to deem worthy to be transported on that pallet. The interesting part to know there is though the logistics employees, they are carrying stuff from A to B nonstop. They are just uh, that busy and that's kind of an up and a downside at the same time. But if we let this now roll long enough, it'll be okay. We'll be totally fine with that one, because at some point the overproduction that we're providing will hit town over there. The downside is we're wasting money during doing so, and I don't like wasting money. Whoever does so. 
So the next bigger step we ought to take now is we need to earn more money. And to do so, we're going to optimize our productions and sales and outputs in the next episode. So we're going to leave this assembly hall up and running as it is, I'd say, because it is just, well, doing its job. And now that we got enough material and everything provided, let's see how it's going to work out in the longer run. But my plan here is to build this building here next door and in the next set, uh, episode set up with you a efficient assembly hall that's going to produce just one product specifically and in a very effe efficient and effective way. At least that's what I had planned. So here we go. We have a little bit of a jam yet again. So. change that so we're making quite some nice profit if every table is working out to its, uh, to its best there so we're good all right friends so i hope you found that helpful drop me your comments down below leave me your thumbs up if you enjoyed and consider subscribing next episode we're going to work with manual connections more and we're going to have some fun with this new assembly stay tuned and see you soon Bye bye